All right, guys, it's Justin at JM Diagnostics again. We're going to do this video just a little different. Instead of you seeing my ugly face, you're just going to see my screen and hear my horrible voice. So what we have here, we're going to be covering some of the functions you can use with the PicoScope software to help you analyze some of your waveforms after you've captured them. So what we're going to cover first is how to zoom. You zoom by clicking on this little magnifying glass here you click on it and then you hold down on your mouse draw yourself a box and then release and then that shows you what was inside of your box right here is your zoom overview you can see where you're at in the waveform here and you can also move it minimize you can move this anywhere you want if it's in the way of what you're trying to see now one of the things I want to show you with this one this is three different high amp clamps. We were testing the clamps against each other to see if one was better than the other. We uh, came to the conclusion that any one of them worked just fine. The details for which clamps are down here in the bottom if you're interested. What we want to cover here though is how to put on your filtering. Right here is your active filtering box. You can click on the filter and you can change how much it filters out. But you can see how it cleans up your line. You don't want to filter while you're capturing. Uh, you want to filter after and always save it with the filter off so that you can always have that data in case you were missing something when you filtered that you filtered out of your pattern. So that's how we do that. That's pretty much all I really wanted to cover on this one. Um, the next one here is your typical cam and crank and I also have the in cylinder pressure transducer in this one but you can see it's hard to make sense of what's going on here it captured this cam really in a very large scale and you can almost see no details on the in cylinder pressure transducer so what we're going to do here we're going to cover how to do that um, the first thing we want to do is look at how to change our voltage scaling over here on the side you can move it up and down I like to drop it so that it lands on a zero line so you can move it like this I don't like it like that because it's harder to read my voltages over here so you want to bring it till it's on a zero and stop there the first thing we want to do is enhance or change our scaling here I call it enhancing whatever you want to call it this changes just the channel that you want to on a vertical voltage scale it doesn't change your your time base like a zoom would and it doesn't affect the other channels so we would go like this and that brings it into a smaller waveform that's easier to see it's not taking up so much real estate and then we can go in here we can filter it and you can start to make a lot more sense of that line right there same thing on the red line we want to lower it down on the size it's too large and then we can just move that up here out of the way what I wanted to show you is what we can do here with this one. Now we're going to enhance this the other direction. We're going to make it go larger. And you can see how now we can see where some of these changes are happening. The next thing we have this cursor on the side. It, it's a voltage cursor. It gives you a measurement for whatever you want to measure here. Right now, the easiest way to get that on zero, and that's where you want on this capture, you put there in this box up in the top here you just type zero and enter and it'll self calibrate it right to zero and so now we're off that's our measurement now we're back to zero there so now I wanted to show you how to measure your compression here you take the first one there and you bring another one down and you put it at the peak and then it tells you right here what the difference is between the first one and the second one. I've got this on a voltage scale, but if I had set it to a preset to tell me what the PSI was, it would tell me that the PSI was in a PSI here. This one is actually 65.1 PSI up going on the voltage scale it's set at. The next thing I want to show you is how to do these rulers. So we take this one over here, this little blue one. And we bring it over and we set it on the top dead center mark. And we bring another one in and that one is a 720. So now that's 720 degrees of crank rotation 
one complete rotation of the camshaft. Now we could put in rulers here and separate the different events going on with your engine cycle, your expansion stroke, your exhaust stroke, your intake, and your compression. The next one I want to show you Okay, what I wanted to show you on this one now is how to make some channels disappear so they're not in the view and not messing up what you're trying to analyze. So if you right click on the field, here's your channels here, go over here, you can turn on or off whichever channels you don't want. Say we don't want that ignition sink in there, it's gone. Say we don't want the crank sensor in there now and it's gone. Say we, all we want to look at is our in-cylinder pressure transducer and that's all we're looking at. And you can turn them back on the same way. The next one I wanted to show you here is how to save a file. This has got four pages and maybe I only want just this one. So what you do is you go, full, go up to the file and go save as. It'll bring up this window where you can make adjustments on your information. And then here you have an option of all waveforms or just the page you're on or specifically which pages. So say you only wanted page two and page three you would put in there and then it tells you how large that file size will be for just those two pages. And then you can come up here, change this if you want to relabel it to something that makes more sense to you and then you click save and it will save just those pages for you. If you've clicked save as it and you've renamed it, it will have both files, the original one and the smaller one that you wanted. The next thing I wanted to show you is how to do a, uh, a JPEG of your capture to share with somebody. You go to that snipping tool there. All right, cancel. Go to your snipping tool. And then it brings up and it, you can pick a new window. So you tell it you want a new window. And then same thing as your zoom. You just click on it and drag it into a box, whatever you want to show. And you release and it gives you this file. You come up here, click file, save as. Tell it what you want it to be and you can make it whatever format you want. I prefer JPEG. Call it what you want, save it. And then you can share with your friends and it's not a ugly picture with your camera phone on your screen people will appreciate it if you do that all right i appreciate you coming and viewing my channel and uh hope that you've learned something and that we can all get a little better at what we do thanks